Hey everyone, it's Grex, and today we'll be going through what I think you need to know about money before going to college. But before we get into that, if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons, that would be really appreciated. And for doing that, here's a picture of Harley. So one thing that is not as obvious as this may sound is that this world is expensive, and your quality of life and future is very dependent on the decisions you make early on. When you think about graduating high school, many people think automatically that they need to attend a good college to get a good job. What people don't realize is that taking on debt to go to an expensive college like George Washington or NYU can seriously limit your future by saddling you with monthly payments, including interest rates of often 5% or more. According to an article by Insider, even state schools, which are considered to be a bargain, will cost on average more than $10,000 for tuition and almost $12,000 for room and board per year. That's almost $90,000 for four years before even thinking about interest. In an article by Forbes, it was found in a survey of 60,000 people that it takes an average of a little longer than 20 years to pay off student loans. So taking out student loans could result in you paying hundreds of dollars a month for many years. The more money you borrow, the longer it will probably take, severely limiting affording a home, the vacations you can take, and what kind of car you can afford, just to name a few. Often people see college as the only way to get a good job, but don't know exactly what they want to do when they enter college and make this enormous financial commitment. In my opinion, only go to college right after high school if you have an exact career in mind and have minimized the cost by choosing a community college for two years and then a state school, or choose a college that gives you significant financial aid or scholarship. Then, have a graduation plan to complete your degree requirements as soon as possible. Otherwise, don't go to college, and get some work experience first to figure out what you want to do. Too many people pick majors that, number one, don't lead to specific jobs, or number two, lead to jobs that they don't realize don't pay very much. Let's jump ahead. Say you graduate college and immediately land a job earning $70,000 a year. Sounds great, right? More money than you probably had in your entire life. Let's see how quickly that money disappears due to average life expenses. Number one, federal taxes. The federal tax for this income level is $11,148.50 per year. But wait, there's more. Number two, state income tax. Most states have some state income tax, so let's use New York as an example. For this income level, that comes to another $3,943.36. So now we're down to $54,908.14 just from taxes. Number three, rent. Now say you want to move out of your parents' house and rent a one-bedroom apartment. Average rent in the New York City area ranges from $1,700 to over $4,000 a month. So let's say $2,500, which comes to $30,000 a year. And let's hope that includes the cost of heat, electric, internet, etc. So now we're down to $24,908.14 after just taxes and shelter. Number four, food. Now everyone has to eat. So according to the USDA Food Plan Spending, for a single person. Moderate cost spending for an average single person is about $300 a month, or $3,600 a year, leaving us now with $21,308.14. Number five, health insurance. You probably want health insurance just in case something happens, but let's say your job provides health insurance. You are still likely responsible to contribute to the cost. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average annual employee medical premiums for civilian workers required to contribute to employee plans was $1,665 a year for a single person. Now, this leaves us with $19,643.14. Number six, car payments. Say you need a car. According to an article by Credit Karma, the national average car payment in the second quarter of 2020 was $568 a month for a new car, and $397 for a used car, and $467 for a lease. Now let's go with the used car payment, and even lower it to $350, since you are trying to save a little bit of money. This comes to $4,200 a year, 
bringing you down to $15,443.14. Oh, and it has to be insured. So number seven, car insurance. According to an article by NerdWallet, the national average car insurance rate for a good driver with good credit is $1,592 a year. Rates increase with a worse driving record or poor credit. The car also needs gas most likely, unless you have an electric car. But let's say that's $40 a week or about $2,000 a year. Number eight. Now you gotta have some fun. So let's say you wanna take a vacation to take a break from all your hard work at your new job. And let's say you wanna go to Disney World for three days and four nights. If the hotel costs $100 a night staying off site to save some money and park tickets cost $105 a day, and you spend $150 on a round trip plane flight because you bought it at a good time and the rates were low, and then you spend only $50 a day on food for the three days. The trip comes out to $1,015. Now let's add a little more fun and necessities. Let's say a couple concerts for $300 total, a few movies a year, maybe $100, the Netflix basic plan for $120 a year, clothes, $200 a year, oil changes for about $200 a year as well, and hopefully your car doesn't need anything else fixed in that time frame. Then let's add $40 a weekend for fun with friends, or $2,080 a year. And let's not include being invited to birthdays and weddings, etc. We're now left with only $7,836.14, and your $70,000 salary is now left to about one-tenth its original value. But wait, I know what you're thinking. I left out FICA tax. FICA tax includes a 6.2% Social Security tax and a 1.45% Medicare tax. This amounts to $5,355, leaving you now with only $2,481.14. But this does come back to you in the form of Social Security income when you eventually retire. And we didn't even include potential student loan payments which, as we said before, could be several hundred dollars a month. This all makes your choice whether or not to go to college, what college you choose, and what major you pick very important. With this little money left over, without even living extravagantly, how are you supposed to save for a home, get married, afford children, or deal with unforeseen expenses? Stay tuned for the next video, or the next few videos in this series on some possible ways to save more money and how to make the money you save grow. Take care, everyone.